It's just afternoon, so good afternoon and welcome to Group 5 of Championship League Snooker of 2018. We're past the halfway mark now in this tournament. Four groups have been completed. Another two will finish off this week. And Tails it is, Ben, it's your choice. First things first, here on table number two, our opening match features Ben Wollaston, a former Welsh Open runner-up. There he is, young man now based in Leicester. Very good talent, capable of beating anyone who's had success in the Championship League before. Right, and his opponent, well known to everyone who knows a thing or two about the Green Bay's game. Okay, first frame. It is Mark Williams, Mark the Williams double break. world champion and former world number one. As always, all matches in the round robin phase of these groups are the best of five frames. A race to three. Your referee for this one, there you can see him, Rob Spencer. Now a little bit of news to tell you about. Group 5 has a different look to what we anticipated. Three players, for varying reasons, have pulled out. Liang Wenbo, Sean Murphy and Barry Hawkins. And so, replacing them in the group, Ben Wollaston, Joe Perry and Dave Gilbert. All of those players coming in in an earlier group than they anticipated. So the group lineup is Williams, Wollaston, Perry Gilbert, Martin Gould, Ricky Walden, and Judd Trump. By the way, two matches simultaneously in operation here as always. Over on table one at the moment, our other stream features Martin Gould, a former winner of the Championship League, up against Ricky Walden. David Hendon is commentating on that one. And one thing I can tell you after just a, a few shots, the table here is running faster, considerably faster, than the tables were running for the week when we had group three and four. For whatever reason then, the tables were quite slow. Black off its spot, pink hemmed in. I think it's a stretch to say that this is a, a chance for Williams, but on many occasions during his glittering career, he's turned a sow's ear into a silk purse. Maybe he can do so at this visit. Well, he got the kiss, but not the good kiss he needed. And so, end of break. Rumble. Well, the table oh, there visibly rolled off, and that wasn't a trickled wide by any means. The cue ball went violently to the left. That's why he hit the brown so thin. What he was trying to do there was hit the brown and leave the cue ball pretty much tucked under the ball cushion. That's what the two players are discussing. You can't say that caught a finger mark. It would need to be the lengthiest fingers in the world.
good safety from Williams. So cute. He's so clever, so astute. Years of experience, so hard to beat. Mind you, his last match, he had a shocker. Beaten in the quarterfinals of the Masters by Ricky Walden last week. Played very poorly. That, after a tremendous performance, to defeat Mark Selby, the world number one in the first round. Foul and a miss. Matt Williams four. Yeah. Well, that reaction off the cushion completely befuddled Wollaston, who missed his intended red by quite some way. He was very much inside where he wanted to be. Ben. Matt. And to no one's surprise, the cue ball replaced. Well, a little oh, more right-hand nice. side applied there, and still exactly the same result. Four. Yeah. Four. Now, in the arena for this section of groups, the TVs do have a screen where they can look and see whether the, the balls yeah. have been replaced that in the right place. And we can also okay. see that. Okay. And as we know now, the, the cue ball has <laughs> been replaced in the right position. Here, though, of course, referee Rob Spencer had to warn Ben Wollaston that he needs to make contact with the red because he can see one on. So three consecutive misses would result in loss of frame. Hence, a different philosophy when he came to the shot. Now, has he left this red on? So the first bona fide chance falls to Williams. Again, though, black on the side cushion, pink remaining out of commission. Six. Williams hasn't taken the cue ball far enough down the table to be on the red he wanted to be, and that's why he's looking at this plant. Has to make it. Matt Williams, 12. I can tell you, by the way, that the first frame is about to be on the board on the other table. Ricky Walden has made a lightning start against Martin Gould. Oh. There's Ben Wollaston, Ponty's first red. Five. 
six. Unwanted kiss on the green. Eleven. When you're playing in and out of bulk, even at this level, it's amazing how often yellow, green or brown can be a positional nuisance. Ben Wilson, eleven. Now that's interesting because Wollaston was completely fooled by the cushion reaction with his <coughs> attempted two cushion flick off the red escape back to bulk shot earlier and Williams again far too narrow. Much better attempt. Foul in the miss. But not Almost. quite good enough. Yeah. Now the danger here for Williams is over adjustment and hitting that red too thick. Mark. The other danger, of course, is that he can see a red directly. And so he has to hit a red here, or it's going to be 1 0 to Williston. He would love a good run over the next couple of days here, Wollaston, maybe even over the next four days, because he has qualified for next week's German Masters. In the last 32 there, we'll travel to the Tempodrome. Whoa. <coughs> Beat Malta's Alex Borg 5-4 in the first qualifying ground just before Christmas. And then the Scottish prospect, Chris Totten, 5-2 in the last 64. Ben Wollaston won. Well, a very scrappy opener. It's amazing how often Williams prevails in this kind of frame. One. Not into aesthetics, not into style points. He can score with the best of them. He can play inspirational snooker. But he's got that invaluable mindset that it's all about winning. He doesn't really concern himself with how. So. Just accepts what the situation throws up and gets on with it. Fourteen.
15. Williams is also qualified for the German Masters next week. He beat Oliver Lyons 5-1 in the first round. Had runs of 90 and 76 in that match. And then overcame his old adversary and good mate, fellow countryman, Matthew Stevens, 5-3 in the last 64. 22. Not happy with that. Still on the pink, though, and the angle might be there to get into the two reds closest to the black. Well, it doesn't need to. The one on the outside goes. 28. A 35 break normally doesn't seem all that significant in modern snooker, but in a frame like this where the balls aren't invitingly placed, it's gold dust. There's the shot to nothing double. 36. Nothing red out of the way, even if no position is obtained. Mark Williams. 36. Williams very much in the driver's seat now. 37 ahead. 51 left, and, as you can see, Wollaston in more than a, a spot of bother. Foul, the mess. Matt Williams, four. While the cue ball is being replaced, I've been talking about the German Masters next week, which is one of the, the highlights of the season for me. Lovely venue, packed crowds, always a good atmosphere there. Well, yeah, I can tell you who these two have drawn there in the last 32. Mark Williams, he takes on Fergal O'Brien, former British Open champion. While Wollaston meets Judd Trump in the last 32. He's such a wily old character. Very experienced campaigner, Williams. Hard to imagine he could lose this frame. Even if mathematically, Wollaston still has enough on the table to win it. He was on the walk there, was Williams. He thought he'd potted the red. Now, clear up here, Ben, and they'll make you a mem member of the Magic Circle. Well, only one point, but two positives from that visit. The black is now quasi into the scoring zone, and the blue also in play. So both helping Wollaston's cause.
by the way, I must tell you that Ricky Walden raced through that first frame against Martin Gould. I told you he was on a big break. Well, the break ended at 140. Fantastic. So he's very much the early front runner for the £500 highest break prize from the group. What a start that is. No extravagance, no risk taking from Williams, and you wouldn't expect it. Again, Wollaston improving his chances, although with a second red remaining close to the side cushion towards the balk line. He would have preferred that in the open. And Williams delighted with that outcome, especially the fact that the red avoided the green. And look where the cue ball is. Four. Well, four points for Wollaston. Shouldn't be of any great consequence in the scheme of things, but that was frame ball after all for Williams. He overcut it by quite some way, as you can see. And so Wollaston still has hope. Thankfully for Wollaston, the, the brown is covering the red closest to the pocket, but this is a shot to nothing for Williams. Mark Williams four. Okay then, we could be on the verge of seeing the first frame wrapped up here. Forty in front, two reds left. Williams needs just this. But he was up on the shot almost immediately. He made contact. He knew he'd overcut the red. Can't imagine he's going to miss this one, though. Well, thanks, man. Tuck away the simple blue. Williston would need three snookers.
And if he quietly rolls in the last red, that's that, guaranteed. Six. Seven. Seven, first frame. Mark Williams. Well, not a standing snooker from either player, but I'll tell you what, a good attitude from Mark Williams. He was fully professional there. Just played the frame as it was, a scrappy one. He's run in the middle of it, I think it was 36, made a big difference. And because of that, Mark Williams leads Ben Wollaston by one frame to zero. The first £100 of this group in his pocket. The reason I'm saying that, of course, the remuneration, the financial rewards in the Championship League, it's £100 per frame one in the round-robin phase. If you get to the semi-final playoffs, it's then £300 per frame one. If you lose in the semi-finals, you get a £1,000 bonus. Lose in the final, it's a £2,000 bonus. And if you were to win the final, it's... £3,000 on top of your frame winnings. So it can be a very lucrative proposition. So how do you get to the playoffs? Well, we know we've got seven players in this group. The top four will make it to the playoffs here tomorrow night. So two best of five frame semi-finals and a best of five frame final. And even the fifth place player doesn't go away empty handed. In fact, he doesn't go away because he will return, in this case, for group six. The two players eliminated from the tournament will be those two who finish sixth and seventh in the group. When will the centre break? And when we reconvene here at the Rico Arena in Coventry in late March, at the end of Group 7, we'll then have seven players in the winners' group, the seven group winners, and they will battle it out for the overall title. What? Now, that's more like it from Williams. When he was right at the top of the game, and at one point he had a massive lead in the world rankings. That's the kind of party he knew, used to knock in as if it was second nature. Four. Five. I can tell you, by the way, that despite Ricky Walden getting off to a flyer against Martin Gould with 140 total clearance in the first frame, Gould won the second. So, all square over there. So. Eleven. Could have done with a little bit of opposite side on the cue ball as it made contact with the, the side cushion. Had the white run as opposed to checked. He might have been on a much easier red to middle. Nineteen. Well, knocks it in anyway and just avoids the green. So now we can say... This is a frame-winning opportunity. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. There's no doubt that the table is far more responsive than it was 
for groups three and four. And that would suggest that we might see more fluent scoring. Mind you, it wasn't too shabby in Group 4. We saw 14 centuries compiled in that group. Overall in the tournament, by the way, including Ricky Walden's 140 this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, we've seen 46 centuries so far. And this might be the 47th. Maybe just dug into the cue ball slightly too much there. He's still on the red, but not as he wanted to be. Going away from the action zone. Forty. Oh, delicate to hold on the blue. Very good. Well, not the contact he wanted. He's still got a red on, but this is a tester. Matt Williams, 45. Well, a good platform, a good start to the frame, but not the one visit we thought might transpire. The head-to-head -head between these two isn't quite what you might imagine it would be. Wollaston's had his fair share of success against Williams. And on important occasions, Wollaston beat Mark 4-3 in the last 32 of the PTC Grand Final, which is now the Players' Championship in 2013, held in the Republic of Ireland. But most notably, he beat Williams 6-5 in the semi-finals of the Welsh Open in 2015, before succumbing eventually to John Higgins in the final. Tremendous performance that was from Wollaston, who made breaks of 90, 82, 75, 60 and 53, in denying Williams a place in the final of his home tournament. And one other win for Williston. He beat Williams in the last 16 in Riga in 2015.
As for the Championship League, surprisingly, this is only their second meeting. Their first was a couple of years ago in Group 4. Williams recovered from the loss of the first frame to win 3-1. And that's what Wollaston would love to do, recover from the loss of the first frame to win 3-1. Could still do it. The fact he's bridging awkwardly here limits what he can do with the cue ball. subdued season I think it's fair to say for Ben Wollaston looking down his record he's not lost in the first round of anything so he's picked up prize money in every tournament he's entered but as yet there's been no really big hit he got to the quarter final of the Paul Hunter Classic that's his best run of the season but that's quite a, a small event in terms of prize money 23 made the last 16 of the European Masters in Belgium. But so far, six last 64 defeats in world ranking events. 30. Over on Sorry. table one, it's much speedier snooker. Martin Gould, having lost the first frame against Ricky Walden, now leads 2-1. 38. As Wollaston valiantly tries and fails to get the red off the cushion. Well, he's moved it fractionally. Now that was a much better pot than it looked. These middles, not exactly friendly. Well played. And not a bad angle on the black either. 41. Well, the first half century of the match. And Wollaston hits the front in frame two. Wilson, 51. Given the position of the colours, I think it's fair to assume that more than likely, whoever points the last red will prevail here.
Now the green and the brown close together might be providing possible shelter for the cue ball to hide behind. But not enough pace. That was a trick missed. Superb pot, but not the best kiss. Now, we saw Kyron Wilson pot a yellow like this in the Masters final on Sunday with extreme check side. Williams does the same and plays it delicately. Not quite as much check side as Wilson applied on that occasion. But well judged, nevertheless. Five. So Williams overruns for the green, ideally. Eight. The knock-on effect, he needed to hit the, the browner just a, a shade thinner with that kiss. And there's the knock-on effect again. So Williams, six in front, needs blue and pink. Wollaston needs all three. About Williams, 12. Oh, and that was very poor from Williams. If he's left the blue straight, he's one lucky individual. Five. Well, it's not ideal, but Williston did well to get there. And by potting the blue, it means both players need both balls. Eleven. Well, he should pop the black, as you can see, but it's not quite a gimme. Eight in the frame, Ben. Well done, Ben Wollaston. If you remember, Mark Williams opened the scoring there with a break of 45. He had a second chance to clear up, but his positional shot from yellow to green wasn't the best. The knock-on effect, the position from green to brown and then brown to blue went against him and... Wollaston was able to win by potting the last three colours. Mark Williams won, Ben Wollaston won. So, let's just keep you up to date with what's happening on the other table. It's all going rather well for the man in action there, Martin Gould. Hardly had a sniff in the first frame as Ricky Walden started off with 140 total clearance, but since then Gould's been the man. And he's in, possibly, to win on a break of 27, already 2-1 ahead. This is the, the former German Masters champion. Who always seems to reserve good form for the Championship League. He won the whole shebang in 2013 and was runner-up the following year. Both of these two 
excellent players. Not currently inside the top 16 in the world rankings, but if they were, you wouldn't be surprised. They would not be out of place whatsoever. By the way, at the conclusion of this match, Gould will remain on table one, where he faces Judd Trump. So Gould, very much in the driver's seat, in our first match on table one in this group five. We'll let you know how that break transpires, how the match pans out. Now though, back to Williams and Wollaston. The first two frames shared, here's the third. Just a little more detail on the match we've just been peeking into, Gould and Walden. As I say, Walden made that 140 to start off with. Yeah. Gould won a nondescript second frame, then made 77 in the third. Well, never easy across the top cushion, but I expected Williams to pot it. displacement of the Reds playing that kind of shot is never a certainty he does have a, a pot left but this is a tester a real tester awkward queuing cramped queuing oh well done Ben 17. And there's an indication, what I was saying before, about the table being faster than for the previous two groups 
a couple of weeks ago. That shot would have been nigh on impossible. 23. A gap of 23 places in the world rankings between these two. After the Scottish Open, the last completed world ranking event just before Christmas. Wollaston was 33rd. Mark Williams is the world number 10. 38. Well, we've seen something of a turnaround here at one nil and forty five nil. Williams was looking pretty good. The pendulum has swung. Well, here showing the form that saw him capture a professional title at the PTC event he won in Sheffield in 2011. Beating the likes of Ken Doherty, Alan McManus, and in the final, Graham Dot. I mentioned he's run to the Welsh Open final in 2015. There, he overcame the likes of Mark Allen, Ali Carter, and of course, as previously stated, Williams. Seventh. And he has made a, a 147 break as well. Well, it's a break that deserves a century. Can he get there? Ninety-three. Couldn't drop on the black off that, so we'll have to pop the awkward red down the side cushion. But with the pressure off, should do this. Ninety-nine. 
Oh, what a shame. 99. The nervous 90s. I don't think he was nervous. I just think he misjudged the pot. What I do know is that after Mark Williams missed a red across the top cushion, Wollaston stepped in with a, a fine effort. He leads by two frames to one. I can tell you, by the way, that Martin Gould has wrapped up victory over Ricky Walden. He lost the first frame, didn't contribute to it, just sat there and watched Walden make 140. Thereafter, though, Gould played very nicely, and he is a 3-1 winner. So the action temporarily suspended. Bended over on table one as they brush the table and reset the balls. Gould will be back there in a few moments, taking on Judd Trump. Commentating on that one for you will be Michael McMullen. Here on table two, the first result of the day yet to be determined. But there is no doubt whatsoever that the momentum is with the man at the table. Well, in the first round of the Masters, Last week, Williams came back from 5-3 down to beat Mark Selby 6-5. And so, recovering from 2-1 down to win 3-2, very much within his capabilities. Mind you, not helped there by the kiss. After a pot of that nature, deserved something slightly better. This blue, with the pack intervening, tricky. As they say, no cigar. Even the, the very best players in snooker somehow, some time, have to rely on a little bit of fortune. You got the kiss, but to no avail. Just a footnote on the Gould-Walden match. I can tell you that Gould wrapped up victory with a, a 71 break in frame four. That's a delightful little nudge. Williams snookered on all reds. Now Rob Spencer there needed to get into the correct position to see whether the cue ball was going to reach the bunch or not. Obviously that blocked our path to it, but I can tell you contact was made, so no penalty points. And this here is made for cat and mouse. Touching ball. 
the cat and the mouse are about to depart, touching ball, so the white will be taken into bulk. Both of these two are veterans of the Championship League. They fully understand the importance of getting a, an early win on the board. But right now, it's all hard work for Williams. I can tell you, by the way, that the Trump-Gould match over on table one has just begun. Well, he was a little fortunate with a flick that gave him a, a fluke snooker earlier in the frame. That one was really well judged. As was the Williams escape, because, OK, he's left a red, but the positional future off that is not exactly bright. Hence, Wollaston had no temptation whatsoever to go for it. Why take a risk if you can gain no reward? Now this time, Wollaston could be in behind the yellow, telling safety from Williams, hence that tap on the table. Very good. And look at the configuration of the balls on the table here. Wollaston knows a misjudgment might be expensive. Probably will be. Yeah. Playing for a very thin edge here. Well, and he hit the pink first. What William six? And I think it's just as well we have video evidence because if Williams does take the miss... Oh, he's not. You can see the red over the pocket. I was about to say this could be a, a troublesome task for the referee to put the balls back. Whoa.
Well, he hit the red so badly. That was one of the most outlandish, outrageous flukes you're ever likely to see. Look at this. Hit the red entirely incorrectly, and it flies into the far pocket. <laughs> and then just gets down without any remorse whatsoever and pots the blue quite rightly. You have enough bad luck against you in this game that when you get some good luck, best make it count. And let me tell you, that was golden luck. Seven. The late Eddie Charlton, the granite-like Australian, hated flukes, absolutely abhorred the, the, the very talk of them, despised them. So much so that he actually instituted a tournament down under where it was basically nomination snooker. You had to nominate your pocket. And of course, inevitably, who was the first player to have a fluke, which was no Hurts. use? Yes, Eddie himself. When you're on the receiving end of a fluke, it's not nice at all. But I think they're a, an integral part of the game and If they were outlawed, I think it, the game would be worse for it. He knows this is the chance to wrap up the match. 23. Okay, he's only five points ahead in the frame. But look at the balls. In Snooker Nirvana, the black would be on the spot. But he has plenty of alternatives. With every ball potted, it's looking increasingly likely that Ben Wollaston is going to make a, a really good start to this group. And as I said before, when he was 1-0 down and 45-0 down in the second frame, that did not look likely. That's worked out OK. Not ideal, but OK. 44. Forty-five. 
And now, after that, it should be a run to the line. He's 30. Doesn't look like that from here. Oh no, he played for the kiss. And he's got the kiss. You can put a fork in this, it's done. 58. 59. Okay, this break began with what was an enormous fluke. 66. Thereafter, though, it's been a, a fine contribution. 66. And there's just enough on the table for Wollaston to wrap this up with a century. 76. The fluke obviously pivotal, so too Wollaston winning the second frame 83. with a blue to black clearance. I think you have to say though that even though luck has played its part, Wollaston has been the better player of the two. Wollaston puts himself on this tournament's century chart.